Hello and welcome to another episode of Laptop Retrospective, and today, at long last, I have a box from Think Mods. Now, if you don't know anything about Think Mods, let me give you the very quick version. They are essentially a startup that is turning themselves into quite the little company that began last year collecting money to create what this video is all about, and that is their NVMe to Express Card or Express Card to NVMe adapter. And that allows a 2242 PCIe drive to be inserted into an express card slot. Why would you specifically need that? That's not important. The important thing is it exists and I have it here, right here for you. Let's address one thing first off. Uh, this was essentially created by one person and some help with his brother and I think a few other family members. But the prototyping, the development, the Everything was essentially done uh, by one guy out of his house. Now, you have that, you've got COVID, you've got prototyping, creating PCBs, 3D printing parts. It's going to take time. And I know that there is quite a few people that were rather upset at how long this took, but honestly, I'm not surprised whatsoever how long it did take to actually get this thing out. And you know what? These things happen. And I'm just happy to have it, and hopefully all of those other people are as well. So with that being said, let's go ahead and open up the box and see what we have been sent. All right, on the inside we have ourselves a little bit of a note. So let's go ahead and examine this. So it says... Thank you for supporting us with your pre-order. With your help, we were able to make the dream a reality, and we couldn't have done it without you. It took us a long time. <laughs> it did. Um, but we felt what we've been able uh, to deliver on our promises of quality and functionality. And that is one thing. ThinkMods wants to make modifications that literally anybody can do with, like, minimal to no soldering. And that's pretty important, I think, to make mods for computers and ThinkPads more accessible because it increases the longevity of the product. There are a few differences to keep in mind and it does give you them down here. So by default, the LED indicator, which is only for drive activity, does not come pre-soldered because this was going to have to be done by hand. And that was a manufacturing decision that allowed them to essentially increase the rate of production. They wanted to get them out. They included it in the box. If you want it, you solder it on. If not, don't worry about it. To increase the rate of production, uh, all mod kits actually include both the 34 and 54 millimeter chassis. Uh, simply pick the one that you need. So that's pretty cool. And they even give you color instructions on how to install the LED. So if you're not super confident with what you're doing, it tells you how to do it right there. So let's take a look at what's in this uh, crumpled up piece of paper. So this is everything that was in my little package. So I ordered the adapter and I ordered the super large sticker. And the sticker is translucent and is very, very nice. So that will look really good on a variety of different color machines. So it's not just a standard white sticker. You've already seen the instruction uh, booklet slash order form. But there was an extra envelope, and I was actually told that this was coming, and I'm actually really grateful because I get to show you some pretty cool stuff. We'll, we'll dive into the actual package in a second, but let's take a look at this. So here are some smaller kind of holographic style stickers, which are really, really cool. But this is really, really neat. So what we actually have here in this little baggie are some prototype boards. So... This was only sent, I believe, to a select few people, and I am one of those very fortunate few that got sent these. So I want to share them with you, because what these are, are the different iterations that this thing went through. How cool are those? Let me walk you through what each one of these are. So the first one that we have up here is the very first prototype board. And this was essentially a proof of concept, so you'll notice that there are very, very few traces and there's not really a whole lot going on here. That board was then superseded by this one, which is blue. And this is where obviously things start to look more of the part. You can see the indicators for the on and off switch, the LED, 
as well as more of the traces and where everything is going to start to connect as well as on the back you can see uh, the special thanks message that was written to the first four backers including the guy that came up with ivy rain which is pretty darn neat now this one was going to use a usb style of uh, flash bootloader however that would be scrapped in later versions speaking of later versions Here is the red prototype, or prototype number three. And this was the first one that had a voltage regulator that was actually going to work. The previous ones had some issues. They weren't really going to work um, in terms of that. So this was also where the switch configuration uh, would be finalized and positioned. And once again, we can see on the back all of the other traces, as well as the uh, four main contributors to the original project. That means that we need to move on to prototype number four. And prototype number four is the first one that switches to the micro SD card. And everything else between this prototype number four is the same as the red one, which is prototype number three. One of the key things that you'll see uh, missing or changed is this is obviously where the micro SD card is going to go and the special thanks uh, text has been moved over here uh, to the front of the board just on top of some of the traces. But other than that, it is unchanged from the other versions. Now there was a fifth version, however, I do not have that board. It was also green and it was only just factory solder uh, assembly quality control testing. So there wasn't any major revisions between that board and the final version. Speaking of which, I think it's about time that we look at what's included in the final version. All right, let's go ahead and open up this little package and see what we get. So the package is factory sealed, so we're going to have to open that up by tearing the strip here. And we'll empty everything out. So we've got the little baggie. We have the adapters. We got the screws as well as the LED. We have an included screwdriver, cause why not? We have the final production version. And then we have a, another really cool metallic looking sticker. And then here we have a quick start guide. And there you go. It's got everything that you need to know as well as a QR code for support. It does warn you that there are parts that are a little fragile and please be careful with it. It also reminds you that the adapter only supports PCIe or NVMe based SSDs and it does not support SATA. So here we go, the final version and then the little cage for the bootloader. And this bootloader is sitting on a micro SD card that even has ThinkMods branding. And that contains a Clover bootloader. For those of you that are running Core Boot, um, you don't necessarily need it, but it is a handy piece of kit to know that it'll boot in pretty much any system that you put it in. So here we have our two adapters. And we have the four little mounting screws that allow us to configure it to make sure that it fits really nicely. Now because I'm going to be trying this in a variety of different machines, I'm going to put this adapter off to the side. I have heard a few things that depending on what machine that you put this into, this part might need to be shaved down with a piece of sandpaper because surprise surprise, express card dimensions vary ever so slightly between all the manufacturers. So don't be surprised if you run into one where this doesn't actually fit correctly. However, the testing shall begin and then I will splice in the results once I've made them. All right, now one thing that you will probably discover is that M.2 MVME 2242 drives aren't exactly a common form factor that everybody makes. There is a compatibility list on ThinkMod's website and I will list it right here. All the drives that we know definitively work with this thing and this is one of them. This is the more common one that's available in North America but there are other ones made by uh, Toshiba and all of the regulars that you'd expect to see 
but if you're looking for something brand new in box, this is probably your best bet. The one that I found is 512 gigabytes, and it was about 100 Canadian dollars, so it's not inexpensive. I was kind of hoping to find a smaller size to mess around with, but that's okay. So here we go. We're going to just go ahead and unbox this. Uh, that is uh, quite the fancy packaging. My goodness. And there's a little book of words in here, and... <laughs> There's, there's the drive. How, uh, how fancy looking is that? What I might do is actually just repurpose this as a, a carrying case. So installation of the drive is pretty trivial. You just walk it in. You'll know because it kind of flaps a bit. Take the screw. And tighten it down and there you go. One installed drive. The only other thing to do now, of course, is to plug it into a computer and make sure that it works. All right, I've got my X220, which has a express card slot here, and we're gonna go ahead and put it in, see what happens. <laughs> and there we go. It reads the 512 gigabyte volume pretty much instantaneously. So that is really cool. Now, one of the other things that, of course, this can do is uh, boot uh, thanks to the micro SD card that's on the back that we talked about earlier but obviously if you wanted to use this as storage uh, you can see that that is very much possible here but enough jabbering let's look at another machine all right so the next machine that we're going to try this in is my p50 we've got the express card reader hanging out here on the side and Local disk F. There it is. Now, while we're in here, and uh, I should point out that this thing has multiple drives now, because it has a two and a half inch bay, two M.2 bays. Now this one for a total of four. Um, one of the advantages of uh, other machines of this era, of course, is all that storage. Let's go ahead and see what exactly we can get in terms of transfer speeds. So we'll do Peak performance, read and write, NVMe, even though it's uh, technically running through an express card slot, so we'll see how that goes. What we have here is a P50 that's capable of PCIe 3.0 off of that express card slot, and theoretically it's capable of a maximum of 900 uh, megabytes a second, and we can see at pushing its performance to the maximum for this drive, we get pretty close to those read and write speeds. Uh, one thing that should also be mentioned is that depending on what model you run this on, you are going to have different speed outputs. So for example, your pre-Sandy Bridge models, so those are your T410, X201s and older, they're going to be limited to a PCIe 1.1, which is around 220 megabytes a second. The average though is going to be around 425 if you've got PCIe of 2.0. So this is definitely the higher end of the performance that you can expect from this drive. But all that being said, though, as you can see, it is doing exactly what it says on the tin. The only other thing, of course, now would be to write an operating system to it and make it bootable. And I know that works. All right, as you can see, this thing works exactly the way that it's intended. The only thing that I would say is that there is a notice on the back of this to remove this thermal cover or thermal sticker uh, to ensure that it fits correctly. And on the T430, I definitely found that it was a bit of a struggle to eject. 
and had to disassemble the entire machine and the right speaker to uh, help it out. So if you are finding that it is a difficult or snug fit, it's a battle of millimeters. With that being said though, this to me is an incredibly easy recommendation to make if you are a computer collector, a ThinkPad connoisseur, because the ability that this thing has to essentially move and transfer files and data between several generations of machine going all the way back to like the, the T400s all the way up to the P50 and the P71, like so much potential here. The fact that it takes very large capacity drives is a huge plus. And of course you do have the bootloader that is on that micro SD card. So if you want to use it for operating systems and not just varying data around, that option remains available to you. I want to thank ThinkMods for including some of the extras in the box that you saw today that I was able to talk about, like the prototype boards. And if you are looking to get one of these, I will leave a link in the description down below where you can order your own. It is a bit of an investment because the drive that you will need to put in it is likely more expensive than the mod kit itself. But if you are serious about getting all the data and all of the performance out of, say, a slot that is not often used, this is an easy purchase to recommend. If you enjoy this sort of content and would like to see more, I would encourage you to do the big four. Please like the video, share, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. So the next time I feature something crazy and cool from Think Mods or any other company that's doing something really neat, you'll be the first to know about it. Thank you so much, and I will see you next time.